today I'm going to teach you all about how I put my little man to bed. We know he's got some past tendon issues. We know he's quite hairy at the moment, so he's getting clipped this week. But I'm going to show you how I cool him down, how I make sure he's all okay, and how I make sure those tendons get nice and cool afterwards, okay? So first things first, once I've had my ride, I walk him for a good 15, 20 minutes, okay? Sometimes I take him out, sometimes I just walk around, sometimes I'm even talking on my phone. It's just so that I'm with him and he's relaxed and he's not huffing and puffing anymore, okay? So if you have a look at his little nostrils, we want to make sure that those nostrils aren't really see theming out that aren't they like whoo, whoo, whoo. so you can still he's still worked you can still see that they're moving a little bit but he's not dripping he's not <sighs> You mustn't stop your horses until they're nice and relaxed, okay? Until they're breathing in a nice, normal way, okay? Then I'm going to show you how I put him to bed. Let's get into it. So in this video, guys, we had some major, major technical issues. But I, in the essence of keeping it organic, I've left it the way it is because I really want you guys to see in real time how I put him away and how I look after him. So please excuse the, um, the downslide in quality for this video. Um, I'm not that great at technology and everything will happen at once. But I hope you enjoy it anyway. Okay guys, so again, I always try to create every scenario as a training opportunity. And the biggest thing with this little guy is he gets annoyed when he thinks it's, he's had enough. When it's home time, he's like, guys, I've had enough. So I try to stay on him in the arena and get him to help me open the gate and really work with him so that he just gets a little in, less impatient. Good boy. And again, he wants to go out now, so I don't, I just stay here. And I leave when I'm ready to leave. And that's the most important thing, that it's all on your terms, not his. Okay? La 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 la. Maybe do some elevator music here, Glenn. Okay, I think it's official he's not trying to go out anymore. <laughs> so I take him out. So follow me, guys. So I take him out and I go into the wash bay. <coughs> Good boy. So we come out and we get him into the wash bay. And we give him a nice shampoo bath. And again with this guy, it's all about having him nice and comfy with us. Hey Fifi, would you mind turning the radio off so everyone can hear me? Now here again, he doesn't like it too much. So we don't want to be dangerous. So we wait one moment, see if he can understand it. If he can't, we'd get off and put him in there. But we want him to be a horse, you know, to be able to be able to, you can play with him, he can be a friend, he can be a, you know, a comrade, he's someone you can enjoy life with. Come on, baby. So see if I can ask him to come in. It's a puddle, mister. Come on. Come on. Good boy. So you see, it's all right. Good boy, it's all right. He's actually shaking here. Good boy. Very good. So you see that first moment, the instinct is just to kick him and say, go on in, you've been in there a million times. Actually give him the time to process what's going on. Give him the time to process that it's all okay. That's the most important thing. And then again, I felt him shaking when I was coming in here. So now I just sit here with him and just let him relax a little bit so that he understands everything's okay, okay? And again, cue the elevator music. <laughs> Okay, so you can see guys, once I've sat there and you know, he's okay and he's happy and he's calm, then I get off, okay? Now, a little bit of safety things. I always get off without my stirrups, okay? Because I've been dragged once before when I was young. You keep one foot in the stirrup, puts a lot of pressure on the horse, they can move away from it. And your foot, if you zoom in on my stirrup, can easily get like that, okay? Horse buggers off, your leg's caught in that. Very, very surefire way to get a broken leg or a kick in the head. So I always try to take my feet out of the stirrups and get off in that way, okay? Very, very important. Remembering, guys, we're at this stage through progression. We haven't just gone and done this. When we first started working with him, we'd get off in the arena, we'd hand walk him out. Then it might be, okay, someone else opens the gate and I walk two metres out of the arena, then I get off. It takes time to get to this, so take your time. Eat, how to eat an elephant one step, a step at a time, do it step by step, okay? Uh, Mogi, as you can see, someone's pretty calm these days. <laughs> Mogi, get off that. Okay, so then, to get off them, 
both hands up here, okay, because then you've got a tight rein still, you've still got control. I hold on to the neck a little bit. I put one hand on the front of my saddle and I sort of launch myself off like that. Okay, the reason why I do that is so that when I land, I'm well away from the horse, so they don't jump on me, etc, etc, and that I don't put pressure on their back by dragging off them. It's really uncomfortable for the horse and it's not very pleasant at all, okay? So we do that part first. Then once I've done that, I make sure I've got all my tools. I, again, just make them hang around. Asking them to hang around is really important because they do just have to get used to being with you. Ah. Good boy. That he just hangs and he's happy, okay? I put my gloves in a really good place. <laughs> and then Toby goes and gets them. <laughs> I'm joking, guys. I don't do that at all. Toby wouldn't allow me. He keeps me honest, guys. He keeps me honest. All right. So once we've done that, I've got my hands nice and clear. I move the bridle over his, or the brains over his neck. I pick them up, I make sure I've got him, okay? It's very easy, once you get to know your horse, just to do that, leave him there, wander off, grab your halter. You know what happens, guys? Nothing, a hundred times, and then one time the rain goes like that, he puts his foot in it, bangs his head on that pole, dead. Or massive vet bill, or your kids underneath him, or your dog. Just don't take the F, just don't, don't, don't take the gamble. Just do it the right way every single time and then everything stays safe. It's so important, okay? Let's do it like that. Then I come around and I grab his halter and I always make sure that I have the tools that I need ready for me before I actually get on. Here's Jeff. Jeff! Naughty Jeff barking, sorry guys. So I always make sure I've got my tools with me Good boy. Before I start, okay? And the reason for that is just so that you, again, you don't have to leave him. You don't have problems. Oh my God, Jeffy. <laughs> Take all of his gear off here. Take his bridle off. And again, when I take his bridle off, I make sure I go over each ear. So once I've got everything off, you can see that we use a little pad under their nose. It's very thin, it's just a bit of toweling, and it just makes it all a bit more comfortable for them, okay? And I just pop that in my pocket so it's out of the way. When I take his bridle off, I want to make sure that I've still got an element of control, okay? So I always pop the lead rope over his neck first. And what I do is just loop the loop. Sorry guys, we literally run out of battery just there, but we're back. So what I do is I loop the lead over his neck and I just loop it through the halter. Don't do it up, I just loop it through. So again, it's nice and safe. So then I've kind of got him still. This isn't gonna hit the ground, but it's gonna keep him nice and safe and easy. Okay, so I've got him. I then take his bridle off. Very, very gently, I allow the bridle to go through his little, um, his little mouth. And then, whoops. <laughs> just got a bit confused there. Then I pop his halter on, okay? Then I know for sure that I've got him, okay? So then I've got him, I've got a lead rope, he's nice and safe. Keep that lead rope around his neck while he's, good boy, doing being like this. Good boy. And I do the cross ties up. Sorry guys, we really are having technical difficulties today, but I want to keep this organic and show you, so it's all good. So cross tie him on the outside. You'll see we've got these little quick, quick release clips here. Okay, and so what they do, good boy, is they, let me get my bridle, good boy, the quick release clips here, they clip in like this, so if the horse is against them, you just pull the little sleeve and it undoes, okay? The reason why they're so great is if the horse is really against it, to be able to unclip a regular lead rope, you've got to actually lift the lead rope loosen the lead rope to get it over the ring to get it undone. And if your horse is pulling against it, you can never do that. So these are amazing for tie-ups because no matter how hard they're pulling, pull the little sleeve down, you're all released, okay? So you're always safe, okay? Clip him up to the side. If they're a horse that's not particularly used to it, you can clip them to these rings instead because they give him a little bit more freedom. But he takes advantage of that a little bit, so I clip him to the edges like this, okay? Once he's like that, I then undo my loop, okay? And I tie my loop back up to another piece of twine, okay? And again, the reason why I do that is it's so that if he pulls back, you've got an additional lead rope that's on there, Okay, and also so that I can keep this lead rope on him and it's not gonna fall on the ground and get wrecked, okay? Really, really important. 
Okay, so now that he's all tied up, guys, he's got his halter on, he's cross-tied, yeah? I've got my lead rope nice and safe, okay? I then get his gear off, okay? Saddles get put up like so. Pop my little boots in, and if you just come around here a little bit, that's perfect. And what I actually do, a little trick here, is when you roll these up, you can actually put the end through the loop and then put that back into the saddle, okay? Because if you do that, it stops them just from falling down all the time. Works really, really well, okay? So I'll show you one more time. You loop your syrups up, you put them in, you loop it around one more time, and that's where people normally stop, but actually if you add one more step, they tend to never come out. It's a really cool little thing I picked up, yeah? So you just keep there, Toby, I'll do the other side. And in this moment, this is when I start to ask him to be a little straighter in the cross ties. Basically, he doesn't like to stand anywhere near the drain, and you can see where his little feet are. The size he is, he has to actually stand like almost on the drain, so he doesn't like that. So then, when I'm on this side of my horse, I undo the girth, okay? Good boy. And then I come back around, to the true side and take the thing completely off. Up on top of the saddle so you've got a nice little package of gear to take off, okay? Don't have this, the girth strap flicking around. Again, you might do it 10, 15 million times and he's fine. One time flicks him just the wrong way and these things get you in the face and it's not pretty. <laughs> it's not pretty at all. So once you're all happy there, then I take the gear off. When you take the gear off, lift it up and then bring it, don't drag it off. Because a saddle that fits well, you see that just stays there, yeah? A saddle that fits well, you're gonna be dragging against the horse's body, it's not very pleasant. So saddle pad up and then over, okay? And then we go put that over, whoops. We really are having technical difficulties today over here. So I'll just put this here. Oh, attach my microphone again, there we go. And then again, when you put the saddle down, put it away from your horse so that he can't stand on it, he can't knock it, and deal with that later. Look after your horse first, okay? Now, if he was clipped, I would actually keep his little kidneys covered as well in this moment. And I'll do one more in the middle of winter so you can see how we do that. But right now, he's not clipped, so we don't need to do that, okay? Next step is boots. So I take his little booties off. And again, I just put them aside so that they're out of the way, but not where I have to completely leave him, okay? Try not to go under your horse's neck where you can because that's where you can really get injured. Keep your hand on them, go around. Now, when you go behind your horses, guys, the closer you are actually to their hind leg, Ha, I moved again. <laughs> the safer you are, okay? And I'll show you that in a moment. If you watch when I come around, think about when you get kicked, what you get kicked with. You don't wanna get kicked with that shoe, do you? Okay? So if you're close like this and he tries to kick you, he's gonna get you with the top of his leg. He's gonna get you with his cannon bone. He's gonna get you with all of this, okay? And you've got time to then get out of the way. As soon as you're out here, you're gonna get the metal in your face. So when you're going behind your horse, keep in contact with them and keep close. That's the safest place to be or nowhere near their hind end. So you either be super close or nowhere near it, okay? Make those choices. This we think is safer, it ain't. Think about if he's gonna kick, what am I gonna get? A shoe to the face. If he kicks, what am I gonna get? A hock to my thigh maybe. Nowhere near as bad as a metal to the face, okay? So remember that, okay? And these are things you wanna remember all the time no matter what, because these are things that are gonna help you, okay? So now you can see he's a bit sweaty, now you can see I've got my horse all sorted, okay? Now what I wanna do is first of all treat the legs, okay? Now I'm doing this in a slow motion sort of way so that you can see everything. Normally we have this done, yeah? But the first thing you wanna do is make sure that those legs get cooled down, okay? Now, I use ice boots, and I've chosen not to use them today because ice boots is not something that feasibly all of you can have access to. They're really expensive things, 
So just cold water is fine, okay? And you just get, especially on the tendons with the issues, you just want to get in there with icy cold water and get those tendons cold. They don't like it. Who would? <laughs> I don't think I'd like icy cold either. And you want to give them a good solid five minutes each leg of just cold, cold, cold. So when you touch them, the, the leg actually feels cold to touch, okay? That's going to keep your horse's legs sound and keep them much happier, okay?
So basically, I think there will be one. We'll have a count. So basically, guys, we're just seeing if there's a spare bay. This opens up, so it's all electronic. The whole walker turns off, okay? So Toby will watch, you can watch the horse. And I think I see a spare bay, maybe not. We'll have a count. So there's G. <laughs> Keep on walking. La 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 la. Is it no spare bay? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> hey, we're Fiona's to the rest. Down here while Fee takes one off. So what? You watch Fee take one off. Fee, can you say hi to everyone? Hi. <laughs> Fee's one of our favourites in the stables. We all have so much fun with Fee. <laughs> Thanks, Fee Fee. Oh, oh dear. Sorry. Okay. And you'll see, guys. So actually, turn around. Sometimes I think of putting my two-year-old on the mini and just leaving in her in here for. You can walk around. Doesn't matter which way you put. Okay. I always put. Just in. Okay. And then he just happily wanders around in the walker. So we'll keep that on there for a little. Bit. So that rug is just we're moving up and down his hair to wick all the water away to dry him off so he's nice and comfy. And he just stays on here with his friends. You can see how happy everybody is. He just stays, hey G! He just stays on here with his friends until he's nice and cooled down and he's dried off as well. It's such a really cool tool to have. Look at him go. Hello baby! But you can see, it's not just about hitting them and making sure they're wet. It's about thinking about what you're doing. What am I doing when I groom my horse after? I'm making sure his cardiovascular system is relaxed. I'm making sure that his skin is clean. And then I'm making sure he's dry so he doesn't catch a cold. I hope that helps, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. It was a really fun episode for me to show you the behind the scenes. And I'm um, really happy to show you. So I hope you enjoyed that guys. You asked for this and that just warms my heart because I think, oh, maybe I don't want to see this. It's a bit boring, but it's so important. This sort of stuff saves you so much money in vet bills, so much angst, like horses hurting themselves in wash bays, things like that. And this is all the stuff that you can only learn if you, you know, hang out and live and breathe in a professional stable. So I'm so lucky that you guys have asked for this and you've given me the permission to teach it to you. So thank you so much. Please ask for anything else like this because that's all I want to do is help you and give you more stuff. So let me know if there's anything else you want me to show you. I'm more than happy to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. See you next week. Mwah. Bye.